In IMM, the city is considered to be a dynamic complex adaptive system, comprised of the superimposition of an enormous number of interrelated components, which through their inner arrangement and the architecture of their ligands, provide a certain physical and provisional arrangement of the CAS. Nowadays, the cities are rapidly growing and the world's population is becoming more urban. The ever-rising scale of urbanization makes the built environment challenges much more troublesome and brings up disquieting uncertainties about the future of human life on Earth. Although the urbanization seems to be inevitable due to the role of the cities as the innovation centers and economic engines, its numerous negative aspects are widely threatening the environment and the social structures. As number of population increase from 4 billion to nearly 7 billion over the next 30 year, the world will need to double its urban capacity by 2050. In IMM, cities are energy using systems in their own right. They consume energy and resources in different level of efficiency. A city's form can have a tremendous effect on its energy and environmental performance. IMM methodology aims to optimize an existing urban arrangement into a more sustainable form, moving from its present form and performance. Ecology, as the scientific study of interactions among organisms and their environment, plays a relevant role in our system thinking approach. And the first law of ecology says that, everything is related with everything else. There were many attempts to reform the development model and the built environment, but most of them were doomed to fail basically four innate flaws in approaching the built environment as a complex system. The current study refers to integrated modification methodology as its scientific ground and regards the built environment as a complex adaptive system, of which the basic morphological elements are build-ups, voids, links and types of uses. As Louis Betancourt explains, cities as complex systems are characterized by heterogeneity, interconnectivity, scaling, circular causalities, development. The population's growth rate is reaching a dramatic measure and has already created a series of questions regarding the ecosystem's sustainability. According to the UN, as the population on the planet doubles to its high estimate of 15 billion by the end of this century, the number of occupants will have from 4 people per household in 1990, to 1.97 by 2050. By 2050, 75% of the world's population will live in cities. 60% will live in urban slums. 60% of the necessary urban infrastructure is still to be built. Urban centers occupy only 3% of the global land area. But, over than half of the greenhouse gas emissions are created in and by cities. The majority of the population lives and works in cities where up to 80% of energy is consumed. Cities are the economic engine of the world, and by being on average responsible for more than 75% of a country's GDP, their further expansion is an inevitable perspective. In this scenario, it is clear how urban areas, as well as their design, play a key role in the definition of a long-term strategy for a sustainable development, despite other ephemeral remedies. Thus, the way of designing cities, epicenters of sustainability, can address the challenge in a tolerable way, facilitating the conciliation between development and sustainability.
In this situation, as sustainability becomes the main development framework for all parts of economic communities, adopting innovative approaches, towards development in the built environment, is becoming urgent. Earth, has become an urban planet, and urban areas are sprawling even faster than they are adding people, swallowing up both farmland and wildlands. The land area needed to provide city residents, with food, energy, and materials is expanding. This ecological footprint is often 200 times greater than the area of a city itself. In this scenario, suburbanization is still on the rise, and unfortunately, rapidly urbanizing nations are following low-density suburbanization model and building in ways that encourage driving on. So, the low-density 20th century development model, based on universal use of car, seems to be till on rise. New giant guzzler of fossil fuel generated energy, plus a factory of emissions, will be around again. This model increased land and fuel consumption, Actually suburban households drive 31% more than their urban counterparts. But due to the fact that cities, can be treated as energy using systems in their own right, with their own varying levels of efficiency, and they are not mere aggregations of disconnected consumers of energy. We are aware that the distribution of users affects energy consumption required for transportation, transmission efficiency. Hence, one message is clear. The urban planet is here to stay, and the decisions we make today, about how we build and live in cities, will affect generations to come. At this stage, some fundamental questions to IMM are, if you are given a massive network with millions and hundreds of millions of nodes, and billions of links. How do you start analyzing it? How do you understand it? How do you extract its properties and what are those properties that you really care about? Claiming sustainability in urban context demands a comprehensive understanding of cities as complex systems and clear identification of the role played by subsystems within them. The majority of current trends and design methods adopt simplified analytical approaches and practically deal with the subsystems as independent entities, neglecting the importance resulting from their interconnections in different scales. On the opposite, IMM is a theoretical platform for assessing the actual city behavior and predicting its potential performance associated with different intervention scenarios. IMM is an innovative design methodology aligned to the UN Sustainable Development Goals 2030. Accordingly, with our approach, cities are regarded as complex adaptive systems and the focus is on simulating their operative mechanisms involving both the internal subsystems, and the external systems that the cities are part of. The result, will be a methodological interpretation of the SDG number 11, suggesting locally based actions, robustly linked with SDG indicators and evaluation methods. IMM, is intended to assist designers and decision makers, providing them a fully integrated design process, plus a set of design ordering principles, to transform an existing urban context, into a more sustainable one. Thank you for your attention. We invite you to visit our website at www.indesignlab.com.